Hey, Frank. Hey, how are you? I'm I'm hanging in there. It's been a week. It's been a busy week. Yeah. Love the hat. Oh, like so yeah, many you. people were asking about the, those hats and t-shirt all all this week. I know. Yeah. Um, I, I noticed it looked like uh, a lot of the speakers had uh, a lot of the um, swag that just had learn all over it. I'm pretty jealous because this is literally the only thing I have that says learn on it. I love <laughs> You're it. lucky. I don't even have one. <laughs> Well, today, we have, today, today, today we have a great show with a lot of stuff. Uh, it's a special episode because it's not it's out of our usual schedule. Right. Want to do some kind of recap of uh, Ignite, of course, and uh, we thought about bringing someone that is outside Microsoft, so part of the Microsoft community. And uh, it's uh, one of my friends that I, I know her for a long time. I met her at a, at a big event. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, well, I don't see her very often. She's on the other side of the Canada. She's an expert on the uh, Microsoft data platform. Uh, so let me introduce you, Melody. How are you, Melody? I'm great. So <laughs> glad to be here. <laughs> So Melody is a Azure and uh, not Azure, a data platform MVP. Recently, changed title for RD. And if you don't know what it is, MVP and RD, let me explain to you, people, people, viewers, people in the chat. If you're watching on Twitch, MVP is for Microsoft uh, Most val Valuable, uh, no, Valuable Professional, and RD is for Original Director. So those people are outside Microsoft, heroes in the community, participating, doing blogs, uh, answering questions in forums, maybe participating in open source project, doing conferences, presenting, and stuff like that. And, MV uh, and Melody has been awarded five years in a row. So like <laughs> a real champ. And uh, so, yeah, did you have time to watch a little bit of um, of Ignite, Melody? Yeah, always. Um, I was just actually talking to some of my colleagues today. They were saying, you know, what have you do been doing this week? And I said, always make time to watch Ignite. It's always exciting. Microsoft events are my favorite of the year because there's always something new and exciting to see. Um, Ignite is not necessarily the biggest event for data professionals. But Microsoft goes out of their way to make it exciting, I think, for every aspect. Azure mm -hmm. is fundamental to everybody, right? And all of the data platform is excited to see what's happening on Azure, and there's always new stuff. So I love to see what's coming and what's going on on the, on the Azure platform. So always excited to see what's happening. Um, so yeah, one of my favorite events of the year, for, for sure. There's always great nuggets to learn. Yeah, it was good. And I like this here that, you know, because it was fully online, like it was it was repeated three times. In fact, I think that was one of my, my like favorite thing of this Ignite was that the fact that whatever you wear around the globe, you could watch it not in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah. And even if even if you missed something in your time zone, there was like a later time that you could catch it in somebody else's time zone. So even though I'm in Pacific time, which is the same as Microsoft, honestly, if it was happening when I had a meeting or I had to do something for work, I could catch it in my evening, which really made it convenient. So some of the stuff that I missed because I had to do work stuff, I could still catch in my off hours, which was great. I like that. Yeah. And all the sessions have been recorded and also will be available after on demand so for example for me i was on duty you know being a moderator and answering tons of questions in the chat so that was what i was doing so i didn't have the time to watch a lot of sessions so we'll be able to catch up watching the on demand video maybe not tonight because tonight i think i will be sleeping <laughs> very well <laughs> but maybe starting tomorrow or during the weekend watching a few sessions they will all be available on demand so that's pretty cool well, not only that, there's a lot of detail. So there is so much information in each one of those sessions 
that it's really hard to grasp all the little nuances of the information that's in there. So if you really want to dive into how did they actually do that to, to get the details of that and kind of learn from how those examples happened, it's, it's nice to be able to watch them in slow motion because these experts, they know so much and they go through it really fast. So to be able to, I don't know, maybe I'm a slow learner. So for me to be able to see somebody do it that quickly and pick it up and learn it that fast, that's a little bit harder. So just to be able to revisit that information later, I find that very valuable. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way, Melody. And and <clears throat> honestly, the big thing for me that's missing from, you know, things like Ignite and even Build and all the other virtual events that we go to uh, is uh, not only being able to interact with people, but to float around and just feel like I'm, you know, getting a lot of different in inspiration and information from all kinds of, uh, you know, speakers I've never met, people I've, I've run into in the hallway and that, you know, the whole hallway track is, is what's missing. But I love that um, the trade-off, at least for me, is that I can now consume things um, at sort of my own pace, a way that is a little bit better for me. I can go back and watch the videos on demand later. Um, so, you know, I don't know, like it's been kind of nice to be able to sit here and, and, and take all this new information in and see these amazing presentations, um, you know, from the comfort of my couch. Uh, and then also plan on, you know, going back and watching the video on demand later for the ones that I wasn't able to catch for whatever reason. So Jason, you had the time and you, so you too, Melody. So you had times to watch sessions. So what was, like, did you have any favorite or a ha ha moment in the presentation, something that happened during all Ignite and uh, you want to share? Maybe I, I could start with you, Jason, and we'll, I will keep Melody in the after. <laughs> well, so... I wouldn't say it was one of, one of the sessions. I, it was more like one of the segments that uh, that was one of the you know in the early part of I guess it would have been Tuesday. Um, but I remember them talking about code spaces, and I've been excited for code spaces, and you know it's been something that's kind of been around for a while anyway internally. But now that it's all over on GitHub, um, I think that's going to be a huge thing. One of our pals, Abel, uh, was kind of talking to code spaces and showing a demo about that in one of those early videos we saw. So that one's the one that I think I'm the most excited about uh, that I you know can't wait to go and, and really dive in and start playing around with some of the projects I have going right now and just see how that works, see how what the experience is like. And you, Melody? Um, it's really hard for me to pick just one. There's... <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things I like about the Microsoft um, conferences is there's always three aspects to the conferences that I like. There's always, and, and being an RD and an MVP, maybe that's why, there's always something for business. There's always something for my personal development. And then there's always something for technical. And so I usually find something from each of those categories that I like. And so this is no different. There was a excellent session that I found um, for personal development that had to do with creativity. Then there was, um, of course, a number of different technical sessions that were excellent. And I think you said that I could show a little demo later that had to do with learning. So there's this excellent um, new knowledge center from Synapse that I think is um, phenomenal to help developers or seasoned resource people um, for Synops that um, I can show you a little bit more on that a little bit later. And then on the business side, watching the keynote from Satya and seeing the direction and some of the interactions on a business side that the things that Microsoft has done with business and the direction that, that the industry is going are always huge benefits um, to me and to see where things are things are going. And I find that not only inspirational, but um, help me understand the, the direction that the industry is going. I like it. I, I didn't have the time to watch a lot of session. Like I said, I was uh, on moderator moderation uh, duty. I had some announcements that was pretty happy and like I will be uh, diving into the static web app with C Sharp. I was pretty uh, happy about that. Uh, I really enjoy Satya uh, keynotes. It was pretty cool. And honestly, I really like, 
I, I how can I phrase that? I like the how everybody was behaving. Like it was in the chat. I didn't ban anything. It was smart question. People were interested. The f good feedback. It was very positive, and it was everybody was just having a good moment, and uh, mm -hmm. it was a great experience. I think for at least for me, and what I felt was pretty good. So I, I was I very happy about my ignite. I think the only negative thing I saw was the. Um, it's it's kind of funny. It was like a, a negative positive that people were so excited about some of the new features on the Synops um, feature um, feature sets that were coming out. I think we were, they were talking about the copy feature, and people were so excited about it that somebody was saying, "I wish we could turn the emojis off on the side because there's so many of them. It's a bit distracting." <laughs> And I was like, oh, well, if that's the only negative reaction people have, that people are just too happy, that's a pretty good thing. Yeah, I saw that. The trick was to put it full screen. And then you were... Uh... That's the trick, to go full screen. Yeah. There you go. For next year. <laughs> you like you mentioned a few times the the synapse, and you, had, you want to show me, show us something. You want to show it right now? Sure, we could do that. Yeah, let's let's do. That. Hey, before we before we do oh. that, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually just say goodbye real quick for a little bit. Uh, although I got a little surprise for both of you later on, if you if you want to and you want to uh, humor me a little bit, but uh, I, I've come up with a little game that we can play. Pit the two of you against each other. I might have come up with some questions that favor Melody, but uh, we can also get the you know the audience and, and the viewers involved too. Uh, so would you uh, would the two of you be interested in playing a little bit of a game? Oh yeah, um, I'm down later on. Okay, great. Seems so right. I'm going to say goodbye and go get that all set up and ready to go. And then okay. um, you ring me when you're ready. Okay. Right. See you later. Okay. I'll see you guys. Okay, Melody. So uh, we'll, we'll bring your screen live. Well. Hmm. All right. Let me, let, let me sign in. Give me a minute to sign in. So <laughs> I need to do time then. I need to speak and chat alone. That's always my favorite moment. <laughs> so we are both streaming on Learn TV and on Twitch on the Microsoft Developer Channel. So if you have some questions, I know there's no chat yet. It's coming on Learn TV. If you have questions and you want to ask it, you could go on Twitch TV at the Microsoft Developer Channel, and there's a chat over there, and you could enter your question. So I have the chat open on, on the side, so I could read the question, and I'll do my best to answer it. We have a, a big program today, and like Jason, have a, even a surprise for us, so that, that's interesting. And uh, so like, if you have questions, go there. Otherwise, if you have questions, or, or just like me, that happened to me all the time, the question pop in my mind, when the show is done, when the thing is done, you can always reach us. So we put all our Twitter account uh, beside her name. So you can find me at F. Boucheros. Melody is uh, Melody SQL or SQL Melody. I think it's SQL. Always mix up. I will let, well, you will see it's there. It's SQL Melody or Melody SQL? SQL Melody. SQL Melody. It sounds better. <laughs> And Jason Han also is available for any questions. Are you ready, Melody? Almost. Almost. You know, when you make these really long passwords, it makes it really difficult to sign in. Oh, yeah. To be secure or something like that, yeah. right? Apparently, it's a big thing. Even in 2020, like security must be respected. <laughs> yes. I. Um... All right. So we here we are. All signed in. Am I sharing my screen? Not yet. Did you click the share screen there button in the bottom of your There we go. Share screen. There it is. Excellent. Switch over to this. Excellent. Go here. Go to my Synapse Studio. So 
So that's cool because I heard a lot about Synapse, but not a lot. I heard a lot often, let's put it that way. I put it, I heard often about Synapse. So I know the buzzword. I know it's pretty hot. Uh, I know they mention it a bunch of time uh, during Ignite at the build also previously. Uh, but I have like, except that it's data related, I don't know much about it. So um, that, that will be a very nice uh, introduction or like a, a good way to learn more about it. So, so Synapse is used to be a SQL data warehouse. Okay. And now it's um, had a number of name changes, and it's uh, it's been in the uh, cloud for a while, and it's had a couple of name changes, and it has started to evolve fairly rapidly, and it's starting to get quite the following. But one of the things that holds people back sometimes when starting to work in the cloud is getting used to even just working in Azure can be a little bit daunting when you don't have, say, data in the cloud, right? You're not used to working in the cloud be, um, or you're, say, new to the cloud, so you don't have data already there to work with. So this knowledge center is now new. It's just been announced for Ignite. It wasn't here before. And I think this is going to really elevate the entire ecosystem of Synapse to help both developers and seasoned um, professionals who have been using this area for quite some time to be able to jumpstart anything new. So if you're just new to learning and want to learn how to get used to this space. So if you're new to data warehousing, or if you're new to data in general, this is a great learning space. But even if you're not new as a data professional, and you just want to learn, say, a little bit more of how to integrate data warehousing and some of your SQL skills with AI, for example, this is a great place to go and do some of that learning. But one of the things that can or has in the past held people back is access to data sets to use. So what they've done is they've got these use samples immediately, which I think is very interesting, cool, and helpful. So you can query data here with SQL. And what this allows people to do is get samples of data immediately that they can use. So it has full tutorials available. This script just automatically pops up. It gives people the opportunity to have on-demand information um, and samples, both of data um, that they can access and queries that are already written. Oh, so I cool. haven't actually prepped this ahead of time. So I purposely didn't create anything other than the ability to go and access this. So I had to create a workspace so that I could access this mm -hmm. and that was it. But I didn't create any data sets. I didn't um, create any data to be able to access this. All I did was um, cr create with, have my Azure account and then the workspace so that I could access this. I can run this and it will actually show me data. I don't. I didn't load any data into Azure. I didn't go out and find a data set. Um, so my eldest daughter did a capstone project this past year for her graduation, where where she actually did an AI project to compare a bunch of data um, on dogs for uh, to see what they would look like. It was a fairly intensive project and we had to scour websites and find data for this dog project. It took us a lot of time just to find the data for her to do this project. And this, um, pro this resource now has a lot of data already there. This one happens to be, um, I believe this is the taxi data. Yeah, New York taxi data. 
And what we'll, I'll show you um, through a few examples here is this New York taxi data is throughout a couple of different types of examples that they have where they're using this same data set for a couple of different types of resources. So you can get familiar with that data and use it in a couple of different ways. And it goes back to a number of different learning resources. So they interweave that same data set into a, a number of different learning resources that allows people to not only get familiar with the data and the resources, but um, then you can be creative in creating your own way of looking at that data. So you know that the data works with, um, with it, with the different pieces. So if you wanted to create something in AI or in Power BI, you would know that that data would likely work with that other object, if that makes sense. Sometimes you need data, data that works with different types of objects. And, yeah, of course. And, and if the data doesn't work in those ways, it makes it difficult to do larger projects, right? And finding data that works with multiple pro with multiple resources can be difficult. So it's very interesting that how they've how they've done this. So this this data comes um, is quite handy in this way. So not only does this data just show up, but they've got other things such as pol public holiday data. But if we keep scrolling down a little bit further, I'll make this a bit bigger to make it a bit easier to see all the data. Um, I was looking at this um, last night after I had after I had watched the the demo. It's got um, it's got a number of different op opportunities here, including weather data. And if we get down a little bit further, it looks at um, even a time series here. Where we can. Um, let's see if I can. And I like that you, like you don't need to install anything. You just go in your browser and everything is there. Yes, that makes it very handy. And it's all written for you so that you know the syntax is right. I find that's helpful for beginners. So they don't have to try and figure out um, if things are going to work for them. I was exactly thinking about that. Like, it's been a while since I, I play with SQL. I mean, long time ago, I was doing a lot of SQL, but it's been a while, so I can read it. But, you know, if I was about to write it from scratch, I would probably struggle. But now, because I see that, I could read it maybe run it and then tweak it to change it or something like that. So it's nice that everything is, is there for us. And when it comes when it comes out like this, and you're used to seeing things in this sort of plain format, I like the fact that you can view it here and then just automatically click this button and oh, it'll link cool. with chart, right? Whoa. So if I make that a little bit bigger, then on this side, it, it, it comes as a plain chart, but then I have this drop down. I don't have to do anything, but I can make it into a bar chart. And I, I can look at the, and then automate, I've just now shown you the, the different rides per year of the taxi cabs in New York of how many different rides per year and how that's changed over the course of time. Yeah, it's like, it's, uh, wow. <laughs> And that and was just fast, scripts, right changing right? all those things like you just yeah i want i want a chart no i want a bar chart and it just change you have your query on top it's all in the browser this is crazy and we didn't load any data and yeah wow right and and we we didn't write any code and now here it is as as a pie chart pie charts are all manager could be happy now because you know all manager love pie chart. That's right. <laughs> that's <a> fact, right? <laughs> oh, that's so cool. 
and we and we can change it around in any way we want. And then um, we can go back to our knowledge center, and that's just one of the many things that they've got. Um, so that gets you started right away looking at data. So then the other option is we want to look at another different type of data and we don't have access to it or we've never looked at a piece of data and we just want um we want to load some data right yeah so we've got different types of data sets here so the the taxi data is here we can load that data just directly from here and there's a number of different samples of different types of data okay when you load. say when you say like a few i, th I was thinking like two or three but there's a ton yeah, a huge okay. amount of different types of data. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, and it's, it's quite surprising the different variety so that you can do um, a, a real variety of different things with them. So it's not just taxi data. You've got everything from disease data, um, and, and some of it is pertinent. I mean, we've got COVID data, right? from not only sort of Bing COVID data or tracking projects, but also from European um, EDC data. That's um, quite pertinent data that, you know, you might just want to look at because you're interested in it, not, not necessarily for your work. So it kind of makes learning interesting and fun. Yeah. And, um, so from this sample center, we, we had talked about the different SQL scripts. So that SQL script showed you all the data, right? Some of the new things, one of the new things that had been um, announced that I was talking about that I found really exciting for Synapse was um, the copy statement. Uh, they already have a script out there here that they've done where you can preview it, where this copy script where they're copying data, you can already preview it. And they have a number of these different scripts written where you can copy data. And they've pre-written these scripts for you. And uh, yeah, and like, I love it. I love it. And it's a good, like all details with comments and everything. Wow, this is cool with the drop table at the beginning. So like you could run, uh, what what's the word omnipotent when you can run it multiple <laughs> times? Like, like right. it's nothing more like what's like you know it's very. I really don't like. I'm not sure if it's appropriate what I want to say, so I will <laughs> beat myself and just say <laughs> I really don't like when like you're trying to run a script and the first thing is oh that table already exists or can I do this? So like when everything is included in your script and you could just press you know run again, run again, run again. Exactly. I love it. Yeah, and it it's got all the best practices included. That's that's what I probably what you're trying to say. <laughs> In a nice way. Yeah. Um, and then it also includes notebooks. So this is nice um, because it includes notebooks of different types. So whether you're using PySpark or Scala notebooks, um, it's got all the different types and um, it's got them for, um, remember how I was saying, you know, when you're starting to integrate into your ML and you're, you're trying, you're starting to take your data warehouse data and integrate it with, with your ML data and you're starting to use models. Um, because one of the things that was announced was the ability to integrate with models from that other people have written. So you can start um, sharing models within within Synapse now, which is super exciting. Um, some of these uh, can now be shared, which is great. And the, you can use these notebooks now to, to do that. And they're written for you, so you don't have to worry about figuring out all of that syntax. You can just click on one of them. So you can use this New York Taxi prediction one and modify it for how you would want to use it. So you could click on it. And I like the, the idea here of being able to preview it because I was looking at some of these and in a lot of them, 
uh, not necessarily this one, but if, if some of them have um, prerequisites, they list them right at the beginning. So if there's something I need to have, so say I need a, um, a spark pool pre-created, it'll tell me that right at the beginning. So even before I go to provision this notebook or to save it, it'll tell me if I have to have that pre-created. And one of the problems I've had in the past when, when creating these notebooks is some of these things. Like you were saying, have all my import statements, have all of my prerequisites set up. And these are all nicely set up and laid out, making sure that I have all my prerequisite statements set up and ready to go. And then all my ingest statements, all my calls are ready and everything's all set up ready for me to go. That's cool. And so if people want to get started to that thing, so the, the URL is azuresynapse.net? Um, you can go to, um, you ideally accessing it, this easiest is from the Knowledge Center. From the, okay, so from the, here. okay. So I would get, I would go to it from the Knowledge Center and you can get to the Knowledge Center um, from your, um, from your Synapse Analytics. Okay, from the Synapse Analytics, then you go Knowledge Center and yeah. from there. That was a pretty cool demo. Thank you for sharing that and like ramping me up on the, the Synapse thing. Yeah. And there's a whole tour over here, which we didn't even get a chance to look at. There's so much new in this, but just knowing that it's there, I think just opens up the opportunities for everybody. I think it's awesome. Hey, do you, uh, are you curious to see what uh, Jason has prepared for us? I'm curious. And a I'm not sure if I'm scared of curious. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm more terrified, but he seems like a nice guy. I've only just met him, but he seems like a nice guy. So. We could go check it out. <laughs> well, I'll try not to stress you out. It's not. Uh, it's not too bad. I don't. I don't think. And and like I mentioned, uh, I was trying to come up with questions that I think might favor our guest a little bit. So even though I'd love to pit Frank and Melody um, head to head in this in this uh, little challenge here, uh, I've asked, actually chosen to use uh, Kahoot for for our little quiz show thing here, so that actually you know others could could join in too. So anybody that's watching us on Learn TV. Um, anybody who's uh, watching us over on the Microsoft Developer Twitch channel, um, you can also join. So anyway, to our two uh, guests and, and co-hosts here, Melody and Frank, I'm going to share with you my screen. Okay. Okay. And um, what I need you to do is just follow the um, instructions here. So on your side... You want to cut the sound? I'm yeah, let me turn it down a little bit. <laughs> I'm Rocking assuming it will be stressful with the sound or the music in the the, the quiz, right? Okay, yeah, probably. <laughs> add a little, little bit to it. So, but what I need both of you to do is to open up one of your browser tabs and go to Kahoot.it. You should okay. see something very similar to what I'm looking at—just a landing page with a a form in the middle where you'll yeah. add this PIN number. And I've actually got, um, for anybody who, I don't know if this will help, but you, if you just want to do this from your phone, you just want to pull your uh, camera up, uh, this will take you to um, either the Kahoot app, if you have that on your phone, or take you to their site, I believe, where you can log in as well. But we're here, and is this both of you? Is this the random name that they've assigned you? No, nope. give me one sec. I was looking for, I was looking too much to your stuff, and I didn't. <laughs> Type the, the code. Okay, so Melody, which one of these is you? So we know who's who. Um, None of those yet? These are some of our. Okay, I'm um, Tropical Rhino. So Tropical Rhino is Frank. Okay. <laughs> We've got an awesome hair, a silver octopus. <laughs> Um, I'm Gentle Panda. You're the Gentle Panda. Okay. Oh, well, we've got hell. six contestants so far. <laughs> let's give let's give uh, our friends just a little bit more time. See if we grab a few more jumping in here. Yeah, come on, folks, join in. It will be fun. So the the, the like go to kahoot.it and just type that number twenty two fifteen forty eight two. Yep. In it. I lost it. Where did it go? 
the the pin Middle. oh no i i clicked okay and it went away okay do you have both of both of you um were able to log in i have a screen that say you're in okay let's see if we can get 10 players total and then we'll get started need one more person there we go all righty now remind me again who's who I'm uh, Tropical Rhino. Tropical Rhino. And Melody, you're who? I was the Gentle Panda, but I can't find it, so now I'm Wonder Fox. Now you're the Wonder Fox. Okay, great. All right, well, let's get started. Here we go. This is our all-around Azure first-ever quiz show. Getting started here, really excited. We're using Kahoot. Here's our first question. Microsoft Ignite, previously known as Tech Ed, first took place under the new name in what year? Ooh. Is it supposed to come up with a color or a number? On the your answer is on the, your the screen, number. you'll just press the color. Yeah. All right. I got it right. The year was 2015 <laughs> when it switched to tech ed. Oh. Were you, were where you the, there? Where are the numbers? Oh, I see. Okay, I gotta put I gotta put you guys on a different screen. I see. I was like, I don't see the numbers. Oh yeah. You gotta look at the questions. I think on my screen. So, yes. 2015, Frank, were you at that event when it was the no. very first ignite? No, no, like I knew it was there, but um, you know, back then you needed to take a plane and go and uh, <laughs> good old days. Everything is in English. No. I, I was not that great in English back then. So, yeah, no, it wasn't okay. firm. Well, let's move on to the uh, next question here. We'll take a look at our leaderboard so far, Tropical Rhino with 800 and Silver Octopus. Wow, Number let's two. go. All right, here we go. Number two. This new product provides access to physical satellite data and communication capabilities to process and analyze data. This was newly announced at Ignite just this week. I will go. Is that music stressful enough for you? Should I turn it up? So Azure Sphere, Azure Orbital, Azure Communication Services, and Azure Arc. Oh, I got it Ooh. right. All right. Azure Orbital is the correct name, which I think is uh, an awesome name. Frank, do you think we could do some advocacy for Azure Or Orbital? Would that make us space advocates? I would love to, huh? Pretty cool. Next question. Tropical Rhino still in the lead. No. <laughs> Don't worry, Melanie. I got some questions just for you in here. Hey, I'm sure you put that out okay, of Okay, the official social media hashtag that was used for Ignite this week was Ignite 2020, MS Ignite 2020, Microsoft Ignite, or MS Ignite. I think that's a, a bias question. Definitely biases towards towards the Twitter users for sure. The correct answer is, of course, capital M S Ignite. And a lot of people good. got it right. That's cool. Yeah. Good job, everyone. I'm happy everybody that uh, participate. Thank you a lot for for doing that. It's cool. If you like that, we'll we'll do more. All right, here we go. Tropical Rhino still in the lead with a streak of three. But look who's there. Wonder Fox coming up. <laughs> yeah, coming up. coming up. Coming up with a bullet. <laughs> All right, that's here we go. Good. Number four. That's what type of cloud app. services are available in Azure? Are we talking VMs, IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS, serverless websites and database, or Nimbus, Stratus, and Cumulus? <laughs> oh, I think it's Nimbus, Stratus, and Cumulus. Don't tempt me. Hey, look at that. Nice job, everyone. I really wish it was Nimbus, Stratus, and Cumulus. Looks like several others do as well. We should do another show with those names. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're neck and neck now here. Oh, look at this. Okay, moving on. It's getting serious now. I need to uh, to fight. Now to this is this is this is where we sort of you know switch gears into <laughs> things. That right I, I'm sure Frank. I'm sure you know the answers to all of these. All right, here we go. 
I, I'm sure I don't. If you don't need to query the data, which data store is the least expensive choice? Azure Stream Analytics, Azure SQL Database, Azure Storage, or Azure Databricks? Uh-oh. I think I know that one. The you least expensive. Query. That's the keyword, right? The cheapest. In bold. You don't need to query. Ah! I didn't click OK. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it is Azure Storage. If all you yeah, need to do it was storage data, but not query it. It's pretty cheap. All right, Ooh. Tropical Rhino losing ah. some points there. Wonder Fox in the lead. All right, next question: What is the correct tool to perform a data migration assessment? The Data Migration Assistant. Azure, Azure Database Migration Service, Azure Data Studio, or the Azure Data Box, which is pretty cool. This, this is a tricky question. Yeah, you can do migration with most of those tools. <laughs> yeah, it is a little bit of a tricky question. The Data Migration Assistant is the correct answer. All right, Rocky Cat jumping up into third. Ooh. Hello, Rocky Cat. Thanks for joining. Question eight, which of the following is considered best practice for performing data migrations? You try oh, to perform the manual man migration first, try to do an offline migration first, try to do an online migration first, or just let somebody else mess with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my... That's my that's, That's the one I've always done. With. Calling is Melody. Can you, you do it for me, please? <laughs> just call Melody. Oh, it was incorrect, but I'm sure that in real life, that was the best answer for me. <laughs> well, let somebody else do it. I like that one. All right. Good, good job, everybody, on getting the offline migration first. Moving on here. Wonder Fox is still in the lead. Oh. Now we're going to get into the bonus round. So it's really anybody's game wow. at this point still. All previous answers were worth 1,000 points, depending on how quickly you answered it. But now they're worth starting at 2,000 points. So we could see some comebacks here. All right, moving on to our last okay. couple of questions here. <laughs> Double points. You can earn a free Microsoft certification exam by taking part in the what? The LinkedIn Learning Skilling Challenge, the Microsoft Ignite Cloud Skills Challenge, the Global Skilling Challenge, or Microsoft Ignite Online Learning. You got this one, Frank. You must do this. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It is the Microsoft Ignite Cloud Skills Challenge. It's a pretty cool program going on. If you want Indeed, to get certified. Because, uh, by just doing one challenge, it was getting it was giving you a voucher and you could go have a like a to pass a, a free certification. And you and you have until the fifth of October, I think, to uh, to participate to the challenge. So it's pretty cool. Yep. Yeah, That's go good check idea. that out. All right, let's see where we are on our scores here. Ha! Capital Rhino has jumped <laughs> into the lead. Okay. Oh, yeah, two, it was 2,000. Oh. Okay, we got one more question here. So um, I want you to think back to one of the very first questions that we asked, just as a reference, okay? And just to give you a little heads up start, get the mind. Yeah, my name thinking, was. Okay? Here we go. Last question. Worth double points also. Tech Ed first took place in what year? So back when it was still tech ed, what year did it first take place? Double points. Do you know it, Melody? Almost there. Correct answer was 1993. Ah. Oh, like three people got it. I guess yeah. wrong. I said uh, 90. Yeah. I said 92. 90. All right. All right. Well, good job to everybody with the 93. Let's see what that does for the total scores. In third place, we've got Rocky Cat. Yay. Nice job, Rocky Cat. Second, Wonder Fox. Yay. And first place, that leaves, of course, none other than the Tropical Rhino. 4,814 points. 
Congratulations to all. It was pretty close. Love it. Like we need we need to do that now all the time, uh, Jason. I really like that thing. Not because I win. <laughs> 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 Not because I win, but yeah. I like that. It's fun. How That's do you true. like it, uh, people? You like that? Yeah, it was I fun. Know, on uh, on Twitter, on the chat. <laughs> <laughs> People on the Twitch chat says that uh, so I was cheating. Uh, cheating because of the the lag. <laughs> no, cool. yeah, no, that was fun. We'll have to do some more of those. Um, we've been talking about you know maybe uh, doing some games and stuff like that on our show uh, all around Azure, which is every week on Tuesday and went or Monday and Tuesday. So yeah, we'll see what we can work out. Yeah, it was cool. I love it. So Melody, what what are you up to these days? Where people can reach out to you on uh, on Twitter? Yes, definitely on Twitter. Um, SQL, SQL Melody on Twitter, all oh, and uh, SQLMelody.com for my blog. All oh, I'm one of the things I'm going to blog about early next week is all of those knowledge uh, resources for Synapse, so that um, people know what they are, how they can get access to them. Because those are those are going to be really helpful for people, I think. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, I, I was like, I'm not playing a lot in data these days, and uh, now we'll, uh, you know, maybe cheat and we'll go, you know, <laughs> jump the fence a little bit to play with it. I thought it was pretty cool, all those things, and accessible. Well, honestly, there's so many things these days where so much of what we do overlaps right that all of all of azure has pieces that overlap with other things it's really hard to know um as a you know people who are developers have to know a little bit about data people who are in data have to know a little bit about networking so the more that azure is giving us these little jump start things that make each of those things that are maybe not our area of expertise a little bit easier i think it makes our jobs easier all around Um, it, it gives us that little bit of a jump start to to take us to that next level and makes our jobs easier. And in in Synapse now they're doing that. So there's more things that are BA accessible. So maybe your job is a business analyst, or even as a developer, there's a lot of things you can do to create reports that maybe is not your area of expertise, but it makes it a bit easier for you to do. There's things that you can do in AI if you're not a developer or a data scientist there's things that they're doing there that are making those jobs easier for people who just don't have that expertise, but still can get some of those job functions done that can take you sort of a little bit into that realm to make those jobs easier. I think that's great. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, I think it's that's a great point um, because one of the things that I love, and especially after seeing your demo, Melody, is the, con the consistency we're starting to see across a lot of products. Like a lot of the things that you were showing, um, you know, kind of blow, blew my mind a little bit that the data is already in there because that's always the biggest stumbling block is to have some good data to work with. But then also the, the queries and the, the syntax, it's like we've kind of given you something to just start with. But then if you start poking around in some of the other settings and, and looking around, you know, the interface within there, it also looks very similar to things like, you know, um, automated ML, and which you were just referring to. And I see things like notebooks and pipelines, which are, is other language that we see in tools like Azure DevOps. And so there's just, it's nice to see, maybe it speaks to sort of one Microsoft mindset, but it's nice to see that a lot of these things, of course, they play well with, with each other and they can share information well with each other, but it's, it's becoming easier to just move around within the ecosystem, within Azure and feel comfortable with the tools that you're now, you know, working with, even if you've never played with them before. So I don't know, I, to me, that's, I think, something I really noticed as you were walking through your demo of Synapse, how familiar it felt for me, even though I've never used it. Yeah. Exactly. That synergy is so important. And it just, it makes you feel comfortable going in. It's like, oh, yeah, here I am at home in Azure, where I'm used to being and where all my stuff is, and it feels comfortable. It's like, oh, here I am at home again. And that's right. and that's a good feeling to anybody when they first come into something new. Makes it it's it's a comfortable environment for learning, and that's important. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, totally. I mean, and and that's kind of where I, I guess where my mind goes a lot. You know, a lot of the things that Frank and I do and the others on our team are really 
you know, focused on, on helping others learn and, and, you know, we use this word skill and upskill each other and, and, uh, you know, showing people the different modules that we have in over in, uh, Microsoft learn with, his, which is just sort of a, you know, another area within docs. And, uh, I mean, even as I was preparing that quiz show to, uh, for this afternoon, I went through about three learn modules last night on data and going through ones related to, you know, data migration and, and SQL just to, you know, kind of brush up on some of that stuff and figure out some good questions to ask. And, um, it was just fun. You know, like I went through, I probably spent like an hour going through a couple modules and um, I don't know what my score is now, but you know, it's got the whole gamification element into learn. Um, you wanna, I know you were sharing your screen earlier, Jason, you want to show where it is so people can jump yeah, and see if I can, have a, yeah, we still have a few second. minutes so we could, we could show, because that's also one of interesting part of Ignite that is focus on learning. So there's all that, you know, yes, certification, but the learn module, a few new learn module were launched this week for uh, data, for a static web app, for, uh, I forgot, like they had the few new module. So you could go at docs.microsoft.com slash yeah, so, learn. Yeah, exactly. Let me go back. I'll show that real quick here. So um, yeah, just go to docs.microsoft.com slash learn. It'll of course, you know, choose your, your area here. And now I just came up here. I was curious to see what's, you know, what's in learn that's related to databases. So I'll just do a quick database search and that's going to take me to the, the search functionality within docs itself. But usually you can look through here and see ones that, um, you know, are marked as learn and that'll take you straight to that learn module. And yeah. so this is exactly what I did last night is I just started going through here and you can see them, you know, how I checked off some of the ones uh, that I wanted to do until we got to the exercise. And then I think I moved on to another one so I could, you know, again, brush up on some different stuff. Um, but that's an important I did. point, Jason, I want to mention because you skipped yeah. through because for you, English is easy. But <laughs> no, no, I'm serious because learn module are in many different languages. So that's very, very cool. So I know we're doing that event in English, but maybe just like me, you can express yourself a little bit in English and stuff like that. But when it's time to really learn, it's easier in your native language. So the learn module are done in many different language and French is one of them. So if you didn't notice yet, yes, my <laughs> I speak French, my first language, but that's pretty cool because it helps us to absorb a little bit more easier those learn module. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, all of this stuff is has been localized. That's a big effort that you know our team um, pushes through almost all the content that we put out there. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I love learn. I mean, that's why I'm wearing this hat all the time because I genuinely, genuinely do love this this platform and being able to come in here and literally just search for any topic. You know, uh, we'll see if we if we've got anything in here for Synapse. So here's one to import data into Synapse using Polybase. I don't really know much about any of that, but if I wanted to, uh, you know, pick it up pretty quickly, this is where I would come and, and just start with an introduction. And at some point you start going through exercises, which I think is great because for a lot of people, you know, they need that hands-on, you know, something before it really sticks in their mind. That, that's definitely me. I'll read a book and it, you know, makes sense. But until I put my hands on the keyboard and do something, it just doesn't really stick. So being able to do all that, and there's always, um, you know, a nice summary at the end. And, and even some of them have what they call a knowledge check uh, that asks you some questions just to sort of make sure you, you know, you weren't just clicking through it real fast to uh, maybe bump up your score here. I'm up at, at a level nine, but um, mm -hmm. you, 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 you actually have to do some things. You know, you can't just click next, 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 next to get through this and, uh, you know, rack up your points. So anyway, yeah, it's been really fun. Um, if, you know, ha somebody hasn't checked it out, it's definitely worth go visiting and just put in some keywords and see if there's, you know, some stuff in there that's worth, uh, worth your time. I'm sure there is, especially if you want to get the certi certification, we've got some really great stuff in there that'll help prepare you for those certifications. Yeah. A good one to get started, like one that touch a lot of ground, but without going too deep is the Azure fundamentals. So with that one, we ha you have a good overview if you don't know yet what 
you like to specialize yourself or you just want to you're maybe you're not very technical but like you're managing technical people or you interact with technical people and you would like to to understand a bit more azure fundamental is kind of the best for that because it covers a lot of ground without going too deep so i and the certification after that to you know pass the certification it's az 900 but Azure Fundamental is the learning path. It's really a, a good one to get started. Um, I would like to uh, to thanks Jason <laughs> for his super quiz. I know he put a lot of time on that. I really appreciate it. That was a, a good yeah. time. No, that was fun. I'm glad we I'm glad we tried to do it. And um, thank you both for participating willingly. And everybody else that joined, um, it was fun. We'll do it again. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thanks for all the participate participants in the chat and like online that was pretty cool and a big thanks to melody who took the call when i reached to her and said hey are you willing to go online live doing a thing after ignite and she said, yeah of course that's how amazing she is she just like what two days notice yeah we'll do it like yeah you need to prepare them all yeah yeah we'll do it <laughs> and she cannot prepare in advance because those things are all new so Big thanks to you, Melody. It was awesome having you on the show. I'm really happy. And you can come back with a little bit more time preparation if you want later on. <laughs> Maybe for your uh, match of revenge. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, Melody. Awesome. See you later. And thank you, everybody. See you next time. See you Monday. Uh, yeah, see you Monday for another episode of Our on Azure. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.